unstructured stability. For, for the structured stability, we had the matrices G and H and C that determined the direction in which the uncertainty affected the system. The uncertainty delta was a constant matrix. For unstructured stability, no specific direction applies. And in fact, the uncertainty might itself not just be like a constant matrix, it may in indeed be a transfer function matrix. So how does such an uncertainty arise in this case? So if we consider this problem that we looked at before, in this case, we may have a um, something going on inside of here, something that can actually move and rattle around inside of here. Okay, so um, suppose we had yet another vehicle inside of here with the spring attached and so forth. Um, so it's not just an unknown mass, it's also an unknown mass distribution and the, the fact that, there, that the mass inside may have its own dynamics. Okay, so this is how an unstructured problem arises. This is an example. Okay, so now we're going to assume an uncertainty set in which our system is a member. So PI is the uncertainty set. So it's, it is a set of systems for which um, we, it's not completely uncertain. This, in fact, this set is generally we want to find, actually find and know a set like this um, such that our uncertainty, our system is in that uncertainty set. Okay. So we're also going to make the assumption. So we make this assumption. Okay. You got to start somewhere. So we make this assumption of this uncertainty set. We next assume that all the unmodeled dynamics are stable. Okay, so if there's something in there that we don't know about, it's stable. It's not by itself going to blow up, which is often, often the case. Generally speaking, if there's something unstable within a system, you generally know about it. Okay, so, um, and if you know about it, you know it's there, then you're, you're going to try to model it. Okay, so that's, the, that's an important uh, assumption. So, for example, we looked at the issue of a circuit. So a circuit can have what they call parasitic capacitance and residual inductance and so forth. Um, so if you have a circuit and you've modeled it and yet it has this parasitic capacitance and residual inductance and other things going on that are not modeled, um, generally speaking, those comp components are passive components, so, which means that they're not going to generate energy that will cause the system to blow up. And so generally speaking, the only way a system can blow up is if there's some input to the system that, that adds energy to the system. So oftentimes, for example, the inverted pendulum. The reason it's, un the reason it's unstable in the up upward position is because gravity, there's gravity in the system that wants to pull it down. And so gra the gravity force supplies energy that can um, make the system go unstable. So, once we have assumed a certainty set and make this assumption, then we develop a plan to deal with each member in this uncertainty set, either for testing for stability, that is analysis, or by stabilization, that is control synthesis. So control synthesis really means coming up with some kind of a controller that works on the system. So this is control system th synthesis one. This is where we begin our trek. And, and as you've seen, we've, we've come up with a few designs, state feedback design, observer feedback. We've looked at the robust servo mechanism. So we've already started this process of looking at some control designs, control synthesis. Okay. All right. So a common way of looking at uncertainty involves a feedback interconnection. So this feedback interconnection turns out to be a, a pretty critical type of um, approach to analyzing a system that has uncer uh, unstructured uncertainty in it. Okay, so I have this loop with unstructured uncertainty. So if delta and P are stable, then the interconnection is well posed and internally stable if this determinant has all its roots in the open left half plane. So 
we have two issues, well-posedness and internal stability. And it turns out that you can actually go through and show that this interconnection is both well-posed and st internally stable if this determinant has all its roots in the open left half plane. It corresponds to having the eigenvalues or the poles of the closed loop system be in the left half plane. Now it turns out that this condition here is, is the condition that's needed. Now suppose that the plant and the uncertainty are both stable. Then the closed loop system is well posed and internally stable if the plant and uncertainty stat satisfy this relationship. So not the determinant of I minus delta P, but delta P in norm, infinity norm, being strictly less than 1. Now it turns out this, these are sufficient conditions. That is, if this holds, then the stability holds. However, it's possible for the system to be stable and that this condition does not hold. Okay, So if this is a sufficient condition. It's not a necessary condition. But it's a fairly simple one. Uh, we know how to compute the infinity norm of a transfer function. And so if the infinity norm, for example, of delta is equal to 1 or less than or equal, if it can be less than or equal to 1, then the only way this inequality can be satisfied is if the guaranteed to be satisfied is, the, is if the infinity norm of p is strictly less than 1. Okay, And so we... we we have that result, and that's why it's called the small gain theorem. That is, the gain of delta and p must be strictly less than 1. That's considered small. So this is an, just a brief introduction into robust stability. We'll come back in the next topic and look at this in more detail. Stay tuned now for the proofs.